question goes to the first presenter. So she was presenting on an experience from Uganda, and actually, uh, in one of your statements, you say that MFIs or microfinance institutions uh, usually want to uh, support established businesses, but not basically entrepreneurs. And uh, I just happened to have a recent paper on MFIs and their sustainability. But we realized that uh, MFIs, with, whose capital structure was more composed of grants, were not as sustainable as those which were, uh, whose capital structure was composed of share capital. So my question is, uh, do you think it has a link to the terms and conditions uh, uh, from the funders of these MFIs that perhaps they should not support uh, uh, you know, growing entrepreneurs or not? Because one of my findings there was that there was a relationship between non-sustainability or non-good performance uh, in relation to the grants, but I hadn't yet established if they were a link to the terms and conditions. So that's why I wish to know that maybe, if also here, it's within your experience that maybe is maybe due to the terms and conditions from the, the funders of these MFAs. Thank you. Okay, so maybe if you want to take that question so we can move on to questions on the second paper. Uh, okay. Um, it's hard to speak with my back to everybody. Uh, there's a long literature on MFIs, which I don't want to uh, go into too much. I think um, uh, a lot of the um, current research on MFIs suggests that uh, microfinance doesn't necessarily, the, the sort of the Grameen Bank uh, fairy tale uh, doesn't really represent the majority of microfinance clients, and the many are using microfinance for consumption smoothing. And that's not necessarily bad. Uh, the f but it's just important to realize that that doesn't necessarily mean that if you have a lot of MFIs you're in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, you're getting credit to the sector. It's also a reasonable banking, from a point of view of any bank, um, not to, to, to so support, uh, especially a, a commercially financed bank, not to support a startup um, uh, because um, the risk is much higher than uh, the bank can usually afford to do, especially given um, uh, uh, the costs of administration, etc. Um, and so unless you have something like a credit circle where everybody guarantees that loan, um, the bank uh, couldn't do it. Now, should there be commercial-oriented MFIs or should there be grants? Well, I mean, if the flow of grant money sustains the banks, like it does in Bangladesh, then that's great. Uh, and if it doesn't, as it hasn't given the demand for uh, credit in Sub-Saharan Africa, then other models had to evolve. So it's not that I'm suggesting that there's something wrong with your results or there's something wrong with the MFI model in Sub-Saharan Africa. It's the model that's, that w that's working and is sustainable, but we just have to realize that it does not necessarily address the problem that this group faces. Uh, I actually have... Um, I think that um, savings groups uh, may be a, 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 an important uh, innovation that um, could help this group and then lead them so that they're then ready for uh, an MS, MFI when the MFI has uh, money, and I've written a little bit about that. Okay, so um, questions for the second paper? Yeah, at the back. Hi, um, my name is Eva from the Finnish University Network for International Development. My question is to Susanna. I hope I pronounce it properly. Yeah, in your research, apart from, um, well, what was it? Yes, apart from uh, subsidizing cap uh, startup capital for businesses and providing training, did you find any evidence that creating an environment, a an environment that allows young entrepreneurs to be creative would lead to a generation of new enterprises in, 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 sorry, in Swaziland. Okay, so we might take a few questions for Susanna if there are more. Yes, over here. Uh, 
Thank you, Susanna, for the presentation. I'm Han from UNU Wider. Um, in your research, uh, were you able to identify uh, the, uh, the conditions for the high growth youth enterprises? Um, because uh, I, I did notice that in one of your graphs, the, um, the youth uh, entrepreneurs actually outperform. A, a very small number of them actually outperform the adult uh, enterprises. So, um, have you found some ways of identifying uh, which are these uh, high-growth uh, youth enterprises? Thank you. Another question? Okay, maybe you could answer these and we might take another round then. Okay, so uh, thank you for this question. So maybe uh, on the on the first one, uh, whether you know there is an environment for uh, young people to be creative. Maybe to start with, the business environment in Switzerland is weak for everybody, so that hampers entrepreneurship to begin with. And then uh, adoption of technology, and that usually is linked to to creativity and innovation. Swaziland, but not only Swaziland, South Africa as well. So the southern region of Africa tends to be particularly weak in that area. We can see it from a recent Africa competitiveness, or actually global competitiveness report. Um, on a positive side, you know, and again, Swaziland had its own version of the global financial crisis. It hit only in 2011 and 2012 with the declining SACU revenues, and that again caused major, it had important imp employment implications. So that kind of stimulated the government to start thinking about entrepreneurial training. So now we see introduction of entrepreneurship courses throughout, not only at the university, but also at the early stages of education. And, and hopefully that will, so you know, to have the entrepreneurial mindset from early on. That should help. Now, on the high growth entrepre entrepreneurs, I agree with you. That's actually a very important area for. F we have not looked at this in particularly here, but it's area that we want to look in the future. And what the literature says, and we also took note that yes, there are some young entrepreneurs that do very well. But in literature, what you find out that yes, young entrepreneurs tend to fail more often with the next. However, those who survive tend to be more innovative than adults. That's across, not just in Switzerland, and tend to be the high growing. That also explains why, why the European studies started to look at the high potential entrepre entrepreneurs, because you know, even in the United States, it's one out of 20 that succeeds. But then they can really drive and, and employ. So that will be area of future research, not necessarily in Switzerland, but perhaps also in Switzerland. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Yes? Uh, thank you. My name is Gracia Snube from Zimbabwe. Uh, my question is um, somewhat linked to the first question, but uh, it's mainly to do with uh, institutional support, especially in Swaziland, to say, is there any institutional support to the young entrepreneurs for them to be able to start up? Because one of the main challenges that they face, especially in starting up the enterprises, is availability of startup capital. So are there any interventions in Swaziland to try and alleviate that challenge? Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's also an important question. In fact, there was a specific intervention targeted at youth, and maybe we can draw some lessons from that. Uh, in 2009, the government opened something called Youth Enterprise Fund, with a view to provide startup capital for young entrepreneurs. But it was government kind of linked operation, and, and uh, you know, it, 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 two, three years down the road, it had major challenges of repayment rates. 
So one weakness that appeared that, you know, these people were not selected particularly well, so it goes back to selection criteria. But more importantly, there was no monitoring after the funds were disbursed. And again, we had this focused discussion with young people, and they admit themselves, you know, sometimes we are not focused, we get the money, but then there is the pre peer pressure. By the time we get home, the money is spent on something else, etc. So um, those are those specific challenges. So they said something like that. We are very creative. At the same time, we need a little bit more guidance, perhaps. So those are the lessons for the future. Thank you. Okay, so we, I think we'll end. Oh, th there is one more question. I think we have time. Thank you. My name is Ote. I'm from Nigeria. Just an observation for FOSS, the first presenter. What I want to say is uh, part of this work should focus on the impact of non-farm enterprise on structural transformation. Time series methodology is anticipated because structural transformation is time involving. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. In the face of a baseline cross-sectional methodology, may be permissible. Thank you. Um, I guess I agree that cross-sectional methodology is a problem, especially if you want to know about uh, mobility. Um, actually, I even uh, tried to make a panel of enterprises uh, using a panel data set that measured it in 2005 and 2010, um, and I ran into a lot of problems as well. Um, I think we need a lot more work on on uh, mobility and in, in, in this area, but you know, you've got to start somewhere. I think we can conclude on that note. So um, I have one, uh, one announcement um, to make, um, which is at the session after the coffee break, it'll be the poster session, and um, the presentations are listed in the program. And the way it's going to be set up is that each of the seven groups will be presenting at the same time. Um, and presenters A in each group, and that's listed on the program, will speak first, then presenters B, and so on. Um, so each presentation will be seven minutes long, and after that there'll be four minutes for questions and answers um, at each of the stands before the next presenter starts. And all, the aim is to have all of the presentations finished within one hour, so that there'll be half an hour for discussion at the end. Um, so that will be after the coffee break, but I think there's still 30 minutes left, so if people want to catch another paper in a different session, they can do that. But let's um, show our appreciation for the speakers and thank everybody who participated in the discussion.